not sure how uh, how interesting this is going to be for you guys, but this is something that was tossed at work that I'm sort of curious about. So I'm going to pop it open and see what's inside it. Um, so this is the uh, one of the control methods, the handheld control panel from uh, Harris or Harris Farinon or you know, they've got various different names, but uh, Harris is the main company from Harris Microwave. Uh, the True Point 5000 line or range of microwaves, microwave radio. Um, it was, uh, let's see now. So Harris um, made this radio for about five years from 2005 to 2010. And they don't seem to be into these point to point telecom uh, uh, carrier grade microwave radios anymore, as far as I can tell from their website. They've moved on to uh, a lot of military communications and a bunch of other interesting niche stuff. They do space-based communication stuff. I guess there's more profit in there in that kind of stuff, even though there's uh, less potential customers. Anyway, um, that, that's an aside. Uh, so these are rapidly coming out of service. I mean, it's seven, eight, nine years since it's so. Uh, uh, since they stopped supporting them, so I guess it's probably due. Um, anyway, so there's a bunch of different ways to talk to this uh, to this radio system. This was the absolutely most basic one. It just plugged into a port on the front, and it gave you a, a four-line menu. You could scroll through and talk to the thing, and you could uh, do some basic stuff like turning on and on on and off uh, different transmitters and uh, switching the receivers. You could turn on and off different uh, traffic uh, ports on it. And probably the most important thing, the most basic thing that it was used for at least once on every installation was to set the IP address of the unit so that then you could log into it with your laptop using it. So, uh, built-in web server and do all the programming a lot easier that way but this little keypad has got me out of so many jams when i couldn't get my laptop to boot or i was too easy to bring it in or whatever what's holding that together i guess those little nuts there 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 we go it's the itty bitty nut driver somebody's gonna ask Oh, come on, that doesn't want to loosen. I guess I'll have to crack it open. And crack that loose with pliers, and then I can spin it off with a nut driver. There we go. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Um, somebody's going to ask, this nut driver came in a set from Princess Auto that I got years and years and years ago. So how does that come out? There we go. Uh, I got here... Quality past. Okay, so 2006, seventh month was when that was built and inspected. Um, which is odd since the, the stamp on the plastic uh, injection molding says 2006. And eighth month. Hmm. Somewhere in that range anyway. 2006. Which is... A year or two after this model was introduced, but not uh, not much after. We have the little display board, which does it identify what it is on the back? Not really. Uh, TM two hundred four JAA seven P one. Okay. 20 columns and four rows. Possibly, that seems about right. Wonder if I can repurpose that for something. Anyway, here's the uh, here's the fun and games in here. And will that pop out? Oh, I think it will. Yes, it will. Okay. So we got a rubber keypad on the back, which is just one of those, the resistive things that make contact down there. That's not at all surprising. 
and on this side what the uh, MC 68 HCP 11 E1 CFN3 presumably the uh, the main processor that guy with the sticker on him is probably uh, the ROM for this uh, little module we have an oscillator over there which isn't surprising because there's a little processor in here we have an HC574D by Philips and an HC573D and if I'm measuring if I'm looking at this right it looks like they're connected to each other and then connected over to the serial port so they're probably uh, I'm assuming that's a serial port it's actually probably got other things going on because this thing's also got to get power from their power and I'm guessing serial data in and out. Um, so those are probably the serial drivers and uh, yeah, so that that's not going to be a standard uh, RS-232 pinout because it's got to get 5 volts and ground from it. Because I'm guessing it's not anyway. And uh, HIN232CBZ, whatever that guy's doing, there's nothing obvious. It might be the, it might be part of the display driver though. And the other chip down in the corner there that I initially thought was part of the display uh, or the display driver appears not to be, and therefore I was probably wrong about uh, what those two eight port devices were doing earlier too. Um, this is the HIN232, and it is an RS-232 driver. So that's clearly what it's doing. So I wonder what those other guys are doing. So after the data sheets uh, confirmed some of my guesses and blew some of them out of the water, let's quickly go through. Uh, um, so we got the microcontroller, uh, EEPROM, um, this is the 8-bit latch and the 8-bit flip-flop, which now that I look at them, they go to a bunch of vias, which come down onto this side and go to the keyboard, which is a 4x4 four four matrix. So that's probably what they're doing. Well, that's fairly clearly what they're doing. Um, and then this guy is the uh, RS-232. Um, and yeah. Not too much else to see on here, just some common logic chips and stuff like that. So, somewhere on this connector, there's going to be 5 volts and ground. There's going to be uh, RS-232, which is uh, TX and RX. And I don't know what the other pins are doing, if anything. On this side of the board, we can see that there's only really 3 pins connected, or 4 pins connected. That looks like ground. That one looks like it's got a resistor to the ground plane. Um, there's going to be a TX and an RX data and presumably a 5 volts. Now then, there could be stuff happening on the other side of the board. And it looks like there might just be, but because of the connector, we can't really see it. I suppose I could go back and find the 5 volts on one of these chips and see if I could find it on here. That might be interesting. Okay, so there's ground on pin 1 of the DB9. Uh, and we'll pick up uh, VCC off this chip here. Uh, and... That's one diode junction above ground, or above VCC, or below VCC. And there we go, that is... VCC itself on that end. So let's see what happens if we get some power on this thing. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not uh, without anything communicating with it. There might be a backlight, I can't remember, but uh, we'll see. So there's that. I've got five volts in the power supply, and we'll see if anything happens. Power on. Nothing happens. It's not drawing any current to speak of. Okay. 
that was worth a try I guess yeah the 5 volts is getting onto the board so I don't know um, that was a long shot anyways but it's always interesting to see what's inside something that you've uh, just been taking for granted at work for you know a decade or more I may play with this a bit more in the future that uh, that display looks interesting if I can find any information out about it unfortunately everything's all in blobs here so well actually maybe I'll we'll just do a quick search for that uh, part number there I didn't do that oh hello hmm so it is a fairly off-the-shelf item and relatively common although I wouldn't pay that much for it but it's interesting that that's what they think they can get for it even more interesting a data sheet 4.3 volts for the LCD 5 volt logic tolerant um, blue and black and white or blue or black and white um, what do we got here 5 by 7 dot character talks 8-bit parallel there we go 20 characters by four lines uh, a is reflective no backlight oh okay and the LCD is positive type yeah three digits 20 characters that's what we thought power supply max 7 volts so we can run it straight off 5 volts that's awesome I may actually be able to uh, use this thing oh and there's our data bits oh awesome that should be fun to play with I might actually be able to salvage that out of there so after looking at the data sheet for that LCD it occurred to me that in my box of displays here in amongst the 1602 and the Nokia's and stuff does that look familiar <laughs> oh it's a big brother of it never mind and that one's got an SPI adapter on it. Fortunately, I've got another one. Would that actually line up? No, not really. But I think with the pinout that I got uh, from the data sheet, it's probably going to be pretty close to these guys, I'm guessing. And hopefully somebody... Some nice, kind Arduino person has uh, written a library that I can use. But that's another thing for another time. Today was just about satisfying my curiosity and seeing what's going on inside here. And that's been done, and then some, actually. So I uh, hope you found that interesting or amusing. Um, I was never really intending for that to uh, get that deep in the reverse engineering or into the potential stuff, but yeah, there you go. Um, I may also try a little bit more and see if I can figure out what's going on there, but, uh, I don't know, without, uh, without a bit more information, it's going to be a bit tricky. I could probably chase the uh, serial port, uh, back to there, but I still didn't get any indication when it lit up. There was no boot message or anything else, so, I don't know, well, we'll find out. Anyways, thanks for your time, um, I appreciate you stopping by to see what I'm up to. If you have any questions or comments, I'm not sure if I can answer the questions, but what the hell, throw them, in the, throw them down in the comments anyway, and we'll see what we can come up with. Thanks. Talk to you later.